In this lecture, we are going to talk about selection of analog to digital converter as well as the digital to analog converter in digitally controlled switch mode power converter. So here, we will first talk about some building block for digital control, then what are the requirements and architecture of ADC, then selection of ADC and the requirement and architecture of DAC and finally selection of DAC for switch mode power converter. So this is the, you know, if you want to consider a digitally controlled system whether it is a power converter or any other converter. So, we need to consider analog signal, then it has to pass through an A to D converter. Then the digital data comes, then the digital control system, the implementation platform and then whatever signal comes out, it has there will be a D to A converter and it goes to analog. But not all application, we may need analog output in the like in this form, like in power converter, we may need just the gate signal which are like a digital. So, you do not need an analog, but in some architecture in our switch mode power converter, we will find the DAC may be needed. Now, there are few aspects I want to highlight. First of all, in any this power converter point of view, if you consider an ADC, we have to first consider whether this ADC will have parallel interface or the serial interface, then whether what is the data format of the ADC, whether it is a 2S complement or you know offset binary, right. Then when you talk about analog, what is the you know resolution of the how much resolution can be achievable, what is the analog span, what is the propagation delay, right. So all this actually how much sampling rate it can handle, what is the power consumption of the ADC, all this will come into picture when you talk about power converter. Then we have discussed a lot about the digital control platform and we will be discussing more about this. Then in some cases we may need DAC. So then we have to consider what is the, how many bit of the DAC is needed, how many bit of the ADC is needed. So if we talk about analog to digital converter, the data are generally vector, but we can have interface in terms of serial interface or parallel interface. But the requirement of this, the resolution of the ADC should be sufficient so that it meets certain requirement. For example, in power converter we will see in the subsequent lecture that ADC resolution also defer, you know, decide whether there can be a possibility of existence of limit cycle or not. If you do not take that into account, then you may end up with some nonlinear uh, like or the instability. So that means the resolution is very important. The another aspect in the resolution, if you do not take high resolution, then you may end up with that means your voltage resolution may not be sufficient because you need to meet certain voltage in, a, in because we are talking about voltage regulator the voltage resolution is also important. But too high resolution can cause you know penal, it will penalize in terms of the size of the DC, their power loss, their size of the, the digital controller like with the data size. It may also affect the, it may end up with limit cycle, so we we'll see this. The sampling rate is important I told, the data interface whether it is a 2S complement or the offset binary. Again, whether it is a serial interface or the parallel interface, propagation delay, power consumption. So the ADC can be classified into two categories. One is a serial architecture and the parallel. And we are taking some, you know, uh, I would say some well-known architecture like a dual slope ADC, successive approximate ADC, under parallel flash ADC and pipeline ADC. We have not considered here continue, like a sigma delta uh, ADC, like you know, they, that is also a popular architecture but it is just for the basic understanding of ADC. So in dual slope ADC, if we consider, you know, what is the strategy? We have an input voltage which needs to be sampled. So initially this input voltage is connected and, you know, then it passed through a RC circuit where the, because since it is connected in the inverted terminal, so the output will be inverted. So you, it will slowly decrease because the RC time constant, that means it is just a like a uh, you know RC time constant. that means it will slowly if you take the since it is negative it is slowly decreasing with a slope of minus V in by RC. Now 
once actually that means we we allow this voltage and it actually depends on the timer clock when the clock comes then we simply disconnect and connect this vref and when this clock comes then it actually connect to minus vref and this side will be plus vref so we will have a positive slope the voltage will rise that vc voltage and if the voltage rises and when it become the earlier voltage that means before the input voltage was connected that or it becomes zero then that is the time it actually convert into equivalent digital number that means the conversion here that means number of depending on the number of the cycle this clock cycle and then n into vref sorry v in by vref that will give you the digital number that means how many clock cycle it takes that means if you have a higher input voltage it will actually go down and this rising slope is common so it will take longer duration as a result you can see this is the duration which will give you the number corresponding to the digital value that means if the input voltage is large this number will increase the number of cycle will increase and as a result equivalent digital number will be higher if the input voltage is smaller then it will end up with here then it will take it will go slowly so that means it will take less number of cycle to reach to zero state so by that way we can convert into digital number here the advantage is that if there is a some drift in the clock it will not drastically affect the resolution the result and the ram rate variation does not introduce any error that means if you have some variation in the ram rate because it is ultimately mapping between v and vf so that that means this rc time constant will not drastically affect so it is like a you know it is just a number that we have to map now another architecture is successive approximation where we know that majority of the adc you know for medium to high resolution adc when the sampling rate up to 5 mega sample and the resolution can be 8 to 18 bit so these are primarily dominated by successive approximation register and these are high performance low power small uh, form factor then what is the strategy in this successive approximation it has a sip register and this is the successive approximation logic and there is a n bit DAC and the output DAC voltage is compared with the sample voltage of the input that we want to convert and it start with let us take if we take a 3 bit number which has d2 d1 d0 so it start with by setting d2 equal to 1 that is the starting point and then d1 equal to 0 and d0 equal to 0 so it start with this logic when it start that means this voltage will be set at the mid voltage so this is the mid voltage okay so mid voltage now we are talking about an analog voltage which is a green color that has to be converted into digital number since this green voltage is above the 50 percent of this uh, you know the voltage which is coming due to setting of d2 equal to 1 uh, 100 zero zero. that means first bit d2 will be 1 so that means whatever d2 you have taken that will be finalized and it is get locked and then it goes to the next bit then what it does so that means d2 is set to 1 since after that your voltage is still higher then it has to reduce the next bit that means next bit has to come down because you see this voltage is because this will come for the next 50 percent so next 50 percent is sitting here since it is above uh, below that means your analog voltage is below this level so next bit is set to 0 so next bit that means first d2 will be set to 1 then d1 will be set to 0 then it goes to next bit again it takes the 50 percent so here the next bit 50 percent is here and your analog voltage is sitting above that so as a result your d0 will become 1 so that means you will get 101 and that number will be the digital value corresponding to the analog signal so these logics are well known pretty straightforward then the next is the parallel dc where to come the flash dc the flash dc any n bit flash dc we need 2 to the power n minus 1 number of comparator and you need so many register and that is why each comparator have a different time delay so it may cause some issue 
So, one of the major difficulty in the flash ADC because of the huge comparator requirement. We are talking about only 3 bit comparator ADC, flash ADC. But after all this comparator output, then we need to use an encoder and that priority encoder will actually convert that into a binary number. So, ultimately we need a binary number depending upon the status of this comparator output. But one of the major limitation of the flash ADC for 3 bit ADC you need 7 comparator. What will happen for a 6 bit ADC? So, that comes to the pipeline ADC where the pipeline ADC is more power efficient high speed conversion and it is very popular for the frequent sampling rate of uh, you know few mega bit per second per sample then it can be 100 mbps. Now, the flash uh, the pipeline ADC it, it consists of multiple cascaded stages. So, how does it operate? So, we need a 6 bit pipeline ADC in case of 6 bit flash ADC. So, how many comparator we need flash ADC? For 6 bit we need 2 to the power 6 minus 1 which means 2 to the power 3 is 8, 4 is 16, 5 is 30 to 60. So, 63 comparator which is a pretty large number. Now, when you go to flash ADC, if you look at the first stage, so first stage it uses a 3 bit flash ADC to convert into a, so this will set the MSB, then it will pass through a DAC and get the corresponding voltage and then whatever analog voltage you got since the resolution is poor. So, it will amplify the different signal that means after you set the 3 bit DAC there will be a shortage of resolution problem and that particular error will be amplified and that amplification will pass through the next stage and again next stage there will be a 3 bit the same architecture 3 bit flash ADC. So, for 6 bit pipeline DC you need 2 3 bit flash ADC and of course, 2 3 bit DAC. So, but each flash ADC required 2 to the power 3 minus 1 that means 7 comparator. So, you need 14 comparator plus DAC. DACs are much simpler and we will go to the architecture of DAC. So, by that way you can achieve 6 bit resolution and since the it works on the similar principle of flash ADC. So, the throughput of pipeline DC can be made almost close to the flash ADC, but the penalty will come in terms of propagation delay because it has to pass through multiple stages. As a result in the flash ADC the delays are conversion time you know it is in terms of number of stages cycle. So, it is not absolute it depends on the number of cycle and at what rates each, each uh, stages are operating. Okay. So, that is one of the drawback of the uh, pipeline DC. It, it has a high throughput, but the propagation delay is high, large. So, now in case of a DC DC converter, if you take a mixed signal current mode control, we are talking about this ADC. So, you have to meet certain resolution requirement, sampling requirement, what is the data interface that will come to the digital controller, propagation delay and power consumption. And we will be talking about a practical case study when we go to hardware, we will talk about what we have considered. But these are the important aspects that we should keep in mind. Next, if you go to fully digital current mode control, apart from this ADC for the uh, output voltage, we also need an ADC for the inductor current. And typically, if we take one cycle per, if we take the one sample of the current per cycle and one sample of the output voltage per cycle, so we can mark this to ADC like a pipeline ADC, so that one ADC is enough, we can do a time multiplexing. But since we are taking one sample, we need to emulate the current ripple by just an inside RAM and that we have discussed in multiple architecture, multiple lecture, what is the architecture of fully digital current mode control. But here in this architecture, the selection of ADC is very critical because the propagation delay have to manage, then the you know the resolution of the current and voltage both have to be maintained and it should be in such a way we should avoid any limit cycle oscillation. Okay, so, but this architecture can get rid of analog comparator as well as the DAC which was there here because here we need an analog comparator as well as the DAC, but here you can eliminate. So, we can make the inside digital architecture much faster. If you come to D 2 A converter that means we need a digital data analog. So, you need to know whether the digital data is a 2 S complement or offset binary, then analog signal what will be the 
actual range of the voltage sometime we need to amplify the analog voltage but you cannot straight I use a simple amplifier. So, the DAC should come with a DAC driver at the output stage and we will be discussing in the subsequent lecture. So, here the requirement the resolution should be sufficient update rate should be fast the data interface depends on what type of data and what is resolution comes from the digital controller. Sometimes the DAC resolution we need a high resolution to avoid any limit cycle. So, the propagation delay is also important and the power consumption is also important because if you are talking about the integrated circuit these things will all go inside the IC so that you have a data converters, controller as well as you know if you are talking about the control uh, you know digital control IC let us say for multi phase application then you have a centralized digital control algorithm that means there is a core digital control core. So, you have to be very careful about the power consumption of the data converter so that it cannot it should not be very high compared to the other losses of the converter because you need to achieve high efficiency. Now, the DAC can be classified as serial architecture using charge redistribution and the parallel architecture and we are only we will touch upon R to a ladder which is a very popular solution and this architecture is well known where we connect R and 2 R combination and just by drag and drop and there are multiple switches and this switch status will decide your actually conversion between digital signal to analog and it require R 2 R and R you know right side of the any uh, vertical 2 R will look like a 2 R resistance equivalent. So, the current through the register never changes and then this is a particular case study. So, in the R 2 R ladder network if we take in terms of current the output current will be a function of you know this bit position that means what are the bit position bit 0, bit 1. So, starting from bit 0, bit 1, bit 2 and then accordingly these numbers are scale ok. So, we are talking about whether it is a LSB or MSB then it convert into output voltage that means depending upon that. So, we need to convert into output voltage. So, I think this should be MSB because this has the maximum effect. So, I am sorry the B0 here is the MSB because this has the highest effect in the voltage chain and as we go towards the right side this bit has. So, this is like a LSB and this is the MSB of the digital data which can affect the output voltage drastically. Now, in case of mixed signal we need this DAC because this DAC has to convert the digital current difference into equivalent analog current difference then it will be compared directly with the analog controller with the sense inductor current and then the output will go to the lab circuit. So, in summary we have discussed the building block for digital control, we have discussed the requirement and architecture of the ADC, we have discussed selections of ADC as well as the requirement of DAC and some aspect of selections of D2A converter for switch mode power converter. But not all SMPC require digital control required DAC may be few selected, but ADC are mostly required by majority of the digital control architecture. So, you need to be careful about the architecture of the DDC particularly when you are going for integrated solution and their resolution as well as the sampling rate and we will be discussing some analytical theoretical aspect how they can affect stability as well as their voltage resolution along with the hardware case study. That is it for today. Thank you very much.